In this video, we're going to learn to use onParameterSet lifecycle event to receive parameter values. So in the previous video, we are only displaying the parameter value on the component. But that is too simple. We need to use the parameter value, for example, to load the information about the server. Because we are editing the server, we're passing in the ID. We need to use the parameter value of the ID to load the information about the server and then display the server information on the screen for the user to edit. So then how do we use the parameter value? When the parameter is passed in through the URL to the component and after the component is created, there is one lifecycle event that is triggered when the component receives the parameter value. And that lifecycle event, if we use override and then space, then you can see these are all of the lifecycle events we can override. The lifecycle events that I'm talking about is either the on parameter set or on parameter set async. If you are going to make asynchronous calls inside the event handler, then use the async version. Otherwise, you can use the synchronous version. And we're going to talk more about lifecycle events later in the course. But for now, let's override this. So on parameter set is triggered when the component receives the parameter value from the URL. You don't have to call this base class method. This is not necessary. So let's delete this. Here, it is guaranteed that we're going to receive a parameter value. So this is the place where we can use the parameter value to do the things that we want to do in this particular case. We're going to load information of the server that is referred to by the ID. So then here we can say server repository dot get server by ID. And then here we can say this dot ID. So this will return us the server object here. And for that, we can create a private member here and call it server. And afterwards, we can assign this value to it and finish that with a semicolon here. So like I said, inside the on parameter set, we receive the ID, then we use the ID to retrieve the information about the server. Now we know we have a server object here. So here, instead of just displaying the ID, we can delete that. And then we can write implicit razor syntax here. So at sign server dot name, for example, let's actually use a paragraph element and put this inside right? and then maybe another paragraph. And this is regarding the city. And perhaps we're going to show the status as well. So server dot is online. Now, as you can see that we have this green squiggly line because it's possible that the server is now. In order to make sure that we don't encounter null reference issues, we can use a if statement here. So here, just like writing implicit razor expressions, we can say at sign if. So this is C sharp. And then can have our condition. So the condition is server is not now. And don't forget brackets here. The curly braces are very important. So you cannot omit that in razor syntax here. So put everything inside here. So therefore, we're going to render this only when the server is not now. Now you can see that the green squiggly line is gone. And let's run our application. Let's go to our managed services screen here. Let's edit maybe the second server. Click on edit. Now we come to here and we can see server name, city, and online status, which is false. So that means we're able to pull the server information based on the ID. And that means our on parameter set is triggered after the component receives the parameter value. Like I mentioned before, uh, you can also use the on parameter set async version and you can use this when you need to call asynchronous method. So for example, this one currently it's a synchronous method. So if we have an asynchronous method, then we need to override this asynchronous on parameter set instead of this one. So let's delete the second version because we are only having a synchronous method. While we are on the page, let's also create a close button here so that we can navigate back to the managed servers screen. So let's add a line break here. We can use a just an anchor element 
and so that we can navigate back to the managed service component there. So our managed service component, if we take a look at here, it is the servers.razor and the relative URL is just slash servers. So here we can say slash servers, and then we can just use bootstrap class to pretend that this is instead of an anchor, this is a button. So we can use primary and text here is just close. All right, so let's run our application again, just to make sure that we have our close button properly placed. All right, we see our close button here. If I click on it and come back, to the managed service component here and then let's try maybe server number three and we see server number three and all of the information is correct close this maybe try server number one so we tested everything is working and this is what i want to cover in this video if you have any questions please let me know if not i will see you in the next one